In an exclusive CBS News interview, Attorney General William Barr highlights why he opened an investigation to the origins of Russia investigation. Barr says there is evidence that makes him believe that senior government officials may have acted improperly to authorize surveillance of President Trump's 2016 campaign. And he says that led to the spying on the campaign. Critics say Barr is being too loyal to the president. Jan Crawford is in Anchorage, Alaska, traveling with the attorney general. Jan, how is Barr responding to complaints about his work? Well, the attorney general, uh, he wouldn't really talk specifics about what he has seen that led him to open uh, that investigation. But he said he is not swayed by criticism and he won't back off doing what he thinks is right. You're only the second attorney general in history who served twice. I think the first one was back in 1850. Right. I mean, you're an establishment figure in a way. You've had a long career in Washington, but you're working for a man who's not establishment. Uh, and some of his tweets about uh, officials and the rule of law. How do you react when you see those? Are you on Twitter? Do you read his tweets? No, I'm not on Twitter. Uh, and every once in a while a tweet is brought to my attention. But my experience with the president is we have a good professional working relationship. We talk to each other and if he has something to say to me, I figure he'll tell me directly. I don't look to tweets for, I don't look at them as directives or as official uh, communications with, with the department. But when you came into this job, I mean, you had a, a good reputation on the right and on the left. Mm -hmm. uh, you're now someone who is, you know, accused of protecting the president, enabling the president, uh, lying to Congress. Did you expect that coming in? Well, in a way, I did expect it. You because, did. Yeah, because I realized we live in a, a crazy hyperpartisan period of time, and I knew that uh, it would only be a matter of time if you, if I was behaving responsibly and calling him as I see him. Uh, that I'd be attacked because nowadays people don't care about the merits or the substance. They only care about who it helps, you know, who benefits, whether my side benefits or the other side benefits. Everything is gauged by politics. And uh, as I say, that's antithetical to the way the department runs. And any attorney general in this period is going to end up losing a lot of political capital. And I realize that. And that's one of the reasons that I ultimately was persuaded that maybe I should take it on because I, I, I think at my stage in life it really doesn't make any difference. You're at the end of your career? Or? I, I'm at the end of my career. I've, you know. I, Does it, but the, I mean, it's a reputation that you've worked your whole life on, though. Yeah, but everyone dies, and I'm not, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't believe in the Homeric idea that, you know, immortality comes by, you know, having odes sung about you <laughs> over the centuries, you know. So you don't regret taking the job? No. In many ways, I'd rather be back to my old life, but I think that uh, I love the Department of Justice. I love the FBI. Uh, I think it's important that we not, in, in this period of intense partisan feeling, uh, destroy our institutions. I think one of the ironies today is that people are saying that it's President Trump that's shredding our institutions. I really see no evidence of that. From my perspective, the idea of resisting a democratically elected president and basically throwing everything at him and, and you know, uh, really changing the norms on the grounds that we have to stop this president, that's where the shredding of our, of our norms and our institutions is occurring. Now, throughout our conversation, there was one theme kind of that really emerged. I mean, Barr sees his actions since he took office, including uh, clearing the president of obstruction when the special counsel declined to do so, uh, as really standing up for the rule of law. Anthony? Jan, what did the attorney general tell you about why he decided to summarize the special counsel's report rather than release it when he first received it? Well, I mean, that uh, uh, was some news there. I, I was surprised by some things he talked about uh, on that as well. I mean, that was not the plan. He had asked the special counsel's office over a period of weeks and was led to believe that the special counsel's office was working to identify that sensitive grand jury material that could not be released by law to the public or to Congress. Uh, so he expected the report when he got it from the special counsel to have that material identified so that he could quickly turn it around and release it. 
pretty much in its entirety. When they got the report at the Department of Justice, none of that material was identified uh, to his surprise. But he said the public wouldn't wait weeks while they figured out what that was. He had to get something out quickly. People were, you know, camping out at the Justice Department. The media, intelligence officials were wildly speculating, uh, as he put. So he released that summary. He said it was never intended to go in the nooks and crannies of the report uh, while they worked to identify that grand jury information. But that was not the plan. And if he'd gotten uh, what he thought he was getting uh, from the outside, said that four-page summary wouldn't have been necessary. All right, Jan, thank you. You can hear more of Jan's interview with Attorney General Barr on today's CBS This Morning podcast. And Monday, Jan goes with Barr to a remote Alaskan native village to learn about the unique challenges in those sparsely populated communities.